Let me just do a little impromptu experiment here. Okay, so here are two sheets of paper. Um, which has a greater mass? The answer, of course, is that they're the same. So if I drop them, do they, do they fall the same way? Now I crumple that one up and I, I drop them? No, they don't. So there's something else going on here other than just the gravitational force. There's, when an object moves through um, a fluid or a gas, uh, there's an air resistance force. You can feel this when you drive through the car. Stick your hand out the window as a passenger. And the faster you go, you can, you can feel that air pushing harder against your hand. So it depends on the speed. It also depends on uh, how big your hand is. So if you make it smaller, it's going to be less. Okay. Uh, it also depends on uh, some other factors. You could put like a cone on there. So we have, it's a complicated thing though. I mean, you're moving through here and these air molecules are colliding with your hand and it's not simple. But we can model it in a way that works pretty well. We can model the magnitude of the air resistance with this model. This says that the magnitude of the air resistance force is equal to uh, one half. Rho is the density of the fluid, the air, or whatever you're in. A is the cross-sectional area of your object. So, um, if you're looking at it head-on, what kind of air would it have? C is the drag coefficient. So if I have a sphere and a flat disk that have the same area, they would have different coefficients. And V is the magnitude of the velocity squared. So let's look at this case for a dropping coffee filter. Coffee filters are nice in that I can drop, I can stack them. And it doesn't change any of these things. It doesn't change the area or the coefficient. But it does change the weight. So I can change the weight without changing the object, kind of. So let's say I have a coffee filter like that. Right when I let go, what happens? Well, when I let go, there's, there's a gravitational force on it. So it's going to start accelerating. It's going to start speeding up, going down. And after a little bit, it'll have some velocity, V. And so it'll still have the same gravitational force. But now, there's a, a, a velocity, so there is an air resistance force. And this is always in the opposite direction of motion, so it's going to be up a little bit like that. So let's say here A equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Here is A Y. A Y, now we have F air. Not quite as big, so this is going to be, um, say, it's going to be less than, well, Let's say it's going to be equal to negative 6.2. I just made up something. So it, it's not as accelerating as much because now the net force in the y direction is less in magnitude because this is working against it. But it'll still speed up. But eventually it will get to a point where it's almost here. Where these two forces are the same. The air resistance is equal to the gravitational force, and in which case the acceleration is zero, and we call this velocity terminal velocity, Vt. So at terminal velocity, then one half rho a c v squared equals mg. Now, in this particular uh, lab, we're not changing A, we're not changing C, we're not changing Rho. If we want, we could just say this is equal to some constant times V squared equals mg. And that's the terminal velocity. But we want to find that constant. That's what we want to do. So how do we do that? Well, if I take a coffee filter and I drop it, and, and, it, and I let it accelerate, and it reaches terminal velocity, then... Um, I can measure the terminal velocity with the motion detector. And then I can change the mass and measure the new terminal velocity and change the mass. And I can change that and that. And by looking at how those change, I can make a graph of something versus something. I'm not going to tell you what. I'll let you think about that. 
but from that graph, make it such that it's a straight line, and from that slope, make something meaningful from that. Um, so that's what we're going to do in the first part. In the second part, you're going to say, once you know that constant k, then you can model this. If you look back at your first time you did a numerical model where you threw the ball up, you had the acceleration as negative 9.8. But now, every line has going to have a different acceleration because it's going to have a different air resistance force. But you can do it. Okay, I think that's enough.